we need to start addressing climate change, environmental degradation, loss of habitat, loss of species. We need to do it now. If we waited for market forces to tell us what to do as farmers, you know, we'd just wait forever and the world would go to hell in a handcart, as indeed it is. I'm standing here under this walnut tree, which I planted 30 years ago. I suppose over 30 years of growing vegetables, I've become more and more distressed, really, by the damage that we cause by uh, over-cultivating the soil. I would really like to be producing food essentially from perennial plants, plants that come back year after year after year without disturbing the soil, and to try and find a way of farming which is more in tune with nature and, and leaves the ground covered. And to me, that means growing more tree crops. So this winter, I'm going to plant about 20 acres of walnuts and hazelnuts. And I'm really hoping to sort of show that it could be economically viable in the long run to encourage my neighbours to transition, really, from being beef and lamb producers on this steep Devon land to being nut producers, which would be so much better for the environment. It would cut our emissions of greenhouse gases by, you know, maybe 10 or 15 uh, percent, massively reduce pollution, reduce soil loss, and it would indeed even actually sequester quite a lot of carbon. So I'll show you the field that I'm thinking about. Here we are on um, my steepest field. I mean, mercifully, it's too steep to plough. Over thousands of years, the soil has just built up and built up and built up. And it's, there's like two foot of really good soil here. However, from a kind of agricultural point of view, it's almost worthless. There's probably 100 to 200 kilos of beef per acre per year comes from this field. Arguably, we could rewild it. I mean, that would clearly have some uh, benefits. We could just plant trees in it. My plan is to plant rows about 15 metres apart, north-south, up and down the hill, and have livestock grazing in between it. It will be a kind of permaculture system. It's going to cost me a £1,000 an acre to plant it. It would be wonderful if there was some sort of subsidy. At the moment, the taxpayer's paying for cows to graze here, you know, emitting methane, causing environmental damage. Why can't they pay me plant trees, well, there is no scheme for it at the moment, so I'm just going to do it anyway. And it's also very risky. No one grows nuts commercially in the west of England. Certainly no one grows nuts on this sort of slope. We've got to develop a whole sort of system to do it. We need to see farmers thinking long term, you know, in the same way that, you know, nature does. When you plant a tree, it's a long term proposition. Most dairy and arable farmers you know, they're just thinking in terms of the next harvest and the next paycheck from DEFRA, you know, the next subsidies. And in this area, the paycheck from DEFRA would be just as big as the harvest. So you're kind of using a quasi-market. It's not even market forces, because, as I say, 50% of it is taxpayers' money anyway. So we're sort of pretending that the market is going to provide the right answers. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, the market cannot see far enough ahead and it cannot measure the value of a greater horseshoe bat or a bumblebee or a skylark or the amount of carbon in the atmosphere or the amount of carbon in the soil. It is such a clumsy and blunt instrument and we've just got to get away from forming our agricultural policy on the basis of market forces because they're not even market forces anyway. I mean, it's a completely regulated, tax-funded market and farmers produce 0.6% of GDP, you know, financially we're irrelevant anyway, but we produce, depending on what you measure, somewhere between 10 and 50 percent, arguably even more of environmental damage. You know, so clearly you know, the important thing is to be focusing on the environmental damage and I would say the quality of the food produced. This is our future, the future of our children, and it needs to be dealt with with the gravitas it demands and the only people who can really do that our politicians through agricultural policy, through how our, our tax is distributed, public money for public goods, you know, the mantra that we've heard over and over again for three years. You know, it's fine in principle. How it is actually administered, uh, you know, remains to be seen. Most farmers, you know, really accept their 
responsibility as stewards of the land and would like to do better, look after their livestock better. But they do, you know, exist within the constraints of a market system. And, you know, they can't do that if it puts them out of business. But I hope by showing this way and proving that it can produce good quality food in an environmentally sensitive way at an acceptable price, you know, that others will follow and that will become part of the market. I suppose in my more optimistic moments, I, I suppose I think that people might demand that that's how food's produced and they don't really do not want to buy, you know, from the monocultures that are contributing to, you know, all the environmental problems we have. That's my dream. So when I'm uh, 90, if the old ticker's still going, I'll be, I'll be sitting out here on this south-facing slope soaking up the uh, sunshine and the walnuts and hazelnuts will be falling around me and I'll feel that I've done something worthwhile.